I'm Loretta at Hay Sewing and welcome to our first in a series of videos for creative techniques. Uh, we've been inspired to do these videos from your uh, emails and coming into the store, how you've gotten organized uh, during the COVID lockdowns. Um, and so we're going to do a series of videos some of which are going to be used to uh, maybe access some of your stash and use some of your stash up. Some of them are going to be techniques, uh, so things that will help you finish those UFOs. Binding techniques are going to be kind of first up in the first few weeks. Um, and some of them are just going to be simple projects that, you know, you could knock out in an afternoon. For today's video, we're going to be doing an AccuQuilt die called the Arkansas Traveler. This used to be an event only uh, die. In other words, you had to come into an in-person event in order to buy this. <laughs> but of course, you know, obviously that's not happening anymore. Um, and so uh, it is a die that's now available for just regular purchase. And what we love about it is there is not a single right angle on this, de on this design. Uh, so there's no squares, there's no like right angle triangles, it is all elongated triangles and diamonds. And yet, typically those are really difficult to, um, to piece. This is one of the easiest blocks to piece that you can imagine. So we're going to go ahead and get started on it. The first thing that you uh, we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting out. So the die looks like this. So it's an elongated die. There's only three shapes. So we have uh, the diamond shapes, uh, which are going to correspond with my four uh, patch unit right here. Uh, we're going to have the elongated triangles that are small. Uh, and that are more asymmetrical. Those are going to be your background pieces. And then you're going to have the elongated triangle that is symmetrical that is going to be running through the center. Now, the pattern actually on the front here has that elongated triangle and that asymmetrical triangle in the background. So you can absolutely do that, and when you do that, it creates a uh, kind of a star or windmill shape that's actually kind of floating on the background, which is great. I love that. But of course, I can't do the pattern exactly how they tell me. So what I've done is I've taken that elongated triangle that's in the center and done a second, uh, basically, background fabric for it. So on this block, uh, you're going to be picking out four fabrics that are going to be the petals of our little spinning piece here. Uh, so we want to have something that maybe has a little bit of pop on either end and something that has a little less pop in the middle so it's it, so we have a little punch to it. Um, then we're going to have a fabric that is our background and if you're going to do two, those two pieces together, same fabric, you will only need a total of five colors. If you're going to do like I am and do the, the symmetrical triangle uh, in a different fabric, you will need six. So go rooting through your stash, find six fabrics that you'd like to go together, and we'll get started cutting. When we're cutting for our first unit, the first unit we need uh, four uh, diamonds. And for the block, you'll see that I'm going to need like four of the pink diamonds. And cleverly enough, if you look at the die, there are four diamonds on the die. So if I was just going to do one block, maybe just make it into a pillow, all I would need to do is I would take one layer of my pink fabric and lay it over the A section of the die, and that's going to cut me all I need for a block. Now what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to do four blocks and create kind of a wall hanging, table topper kind of thing. Uh, so simple math, okay, four blocks, four pink diamonds, we need 16 of them. And so literally I would lay four layers of the pink fabric over top of my die. Send that through and that's going to cut me enough diamonds for my block. The same thing happens with our yellow. 
because we have the same four amount. So four times four is 16. And then for our uh, kind of blue-green uh, diamonds, we need twice that amount. So we're going to be cutting 32 of them. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to cover this eight times. Now you can run six layers of fabric on the die cutter at one time. So you could do individual colors, like you could do four and send it through, or you could go ahead and like do four and then two of your yellow and send it through with six. It's up to you however you like to think about it. When you go to put this on, we're going to come in, and so we'll say like we're doing our yellow here, okay? We would like to have it so that the grain of the fabric, just kind of a thing to know, you'll notice on uh, all of the dies that there's a little label on the side of the die. And that's trying to give us uh, for storage, but it's also uh, giving us an indication of which way the grain of the fabric should go. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to have the grain of the fabric going this way, grain being parallel to the salvage edges. So if I wanted to go ahead and cut eight of these out, I would go ahead and I would lay the fabric over top of that section there. We're then going to take it and we can cover up our die with our mat and we're going to bring it over to our cutter and we're going to send it through. And of course you don't have to have the big cutter to do this die. Uh, you can do this on the regular go cutter, which is the bigger crank one, and you can also do it on the go me cutter, which is the littlest cutter. So this die can run through any AccuQuill die. Once you get it done, you want to kind of rub its belly. That's going to help you with the static. And rather than just picking the die up, you're going to slide the die off. If you, just, if you just pick up the mat and you are um, uh, pulling it up, what you'll find is you'll have diamonds that are stuck to the mat. And so this way, we can come in, put our hands down, get rid of our leftover fabric, and we have all of our diamonds cut out and ready to go. What's awesome is you'll notice it's not just a diamond shape, it's a diamond shape that has the point cut off, so that we've got the, the points cut off, which is gonna make it so much easier for us to piece. So that takes care of the diamonds. If you take a look at the block, you're going to have for the symmetrical triangles, you're gonna need four per on that, which is going to be our C section. And then if you look at the asymmetrical triangle, you're going to need eight of those per block. And you need a left and a right one, and check it out. We have a regular one and one reversed. So every time you cover it with the fabric, you're cutting a left and a right out automatically. So once again, if I was only doing for a block, I would just take and cover this area four times and I'm going to have everything I need to have the block cut out. Awesome. So let's sit down at the machine and we're going to go ahead and show you how this pieces together. So we're going to take a look and do a section of our block. So we need to have a yellow diamond, a blue-green diamond, a yellow diamond, and a pink, excuse me, a blue-green diamond and a uh, pink diamond. We're working on colors next week. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to join this pair together to this pair together. So when we go and we flip these over, what you're going to find is because they have de-tipped the diamonds, this is going to line up right with the flat and same on the other side. So it's going to make it so you don't have to guess as to where you're going to sew. And I'm literally going to start sewing right here uh, at the notch here, and I'm going to sew down until I get to the notch here. 
One thing to be aware of, the urge is to come in and pick this up and just kind of get them lined up and sew down the seam, which makes a very pretty kind of petally kind of thing, but is not gonna really make our design the way we want it to be. So make sure you lay them out and then come in and overlap them so that we've got them going on. So we'll do both of these. We'll bring them over to the machine. The machine is set up, nothing exotic on the machine. <clears throat> I'm just taking it and setting up on a straight stitch, about two and a half in uh, stitch length. I uh, have my quarter inch foot on, um, it has a little guide on the side. If you're using a Bernina like I've got here, this particular one uh, is the 57D foot. Um, but uh, pretty much every sewing machine is available with a, with a guide, a quarter inch foot with a guide. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're just going to step down on the paddle, get it going, and we're going to run it through. Now I'm only going to be doing two, but keep in mind, you could just go ahead and do all of the units for your block all at one time. So we'll line up the next one. I stopped about a quarter of an inch uh, before I got to the end. I lined up my next one and we'll sew that through. Clip them apart, get rid of our little tails at the beginning and we are headed over to the ironing board to press. And generally when we press, we're going to be pressing uh, towards the dark side. So we're going to come in, we're going to come with the lip of our iron, and we're going to just give a gentle press. Keep in mind we are pressing on uh, diamond shapes. So when we're doing a diamond shape, there's a lot of uh, semi-bias edges here. So it's a, just a gentle press, not a press where we stretch out the, the fabric. Now, once we get that done, we want to go back and we want to line this up again. Now, when we flip this over, we're going to be lining up once again that flat side and that flat side. You can see it a little better on the top here. So those two ends are going to tell us where we need to be. And that is going to, when I was sewing my sample part together, I found that it actually did line me up almost perfectly every time. So if you are a close is good enough quilter, you can just line those up and off you go and do. Now, if you're a little OCD on the corners, okay, corners matching, Okay, and uh, I'm in that group, so uh, I'm, not a <laughs> I'm not blaming anybody. I always like to make sure that that corner is going to be perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little quilt tack in there to check out the corner first, and then we're going to go ahead and sew the piece. So let's head back over to the sewing machine. And this is kind of a strange corner because normally when you're putting four patches together and you've pressed seam allowances in opposite directions, you're going to find that the seam allowances, they nestle together, right? But because this is a diamond, they don't nestle. So we're just going to line those ends up. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to line up on my quarter inch. And if you've not done a quilt tack before, all you're doing for a quilt tack is you're leaving the machine exactly the same. So if you have a background in fashion sewing, typically if we're doing something temporary, we go to a basting stitch, long stitch length. That's not what we're doing here. We're going to go ahead, be at two and a half in stitch length, and we're going to sew a few stitches, like four or five stitches across the end. Uh, across the seam so that we are uh, just anchoring that seam. The key to it is to have enough stitches to hold it together when we open it up, but not so many that if we need to pull it out, if we're not happy with it, that we have to get the seam ripper out. And that's really the whole point to this because I love to quilt, but I don't want to have to seam ripper. So we're going to open this up and we're going to take a look 
and we're looking really nice. However, let's pretend that it wasn't looking nice. What would you do? You would come in and you'd grab a hold of the bottom thread and you see how easily we can pull that out? And then we could go back and put it back in. If I had sewn the whole seam and then had to rip out the seam, that's where I find that I, I tend to live with things that I regret later on. So if I do the tack, I can kind of check it out, make sure I'm happy with it before I do anything. And it also helps to make sure that, okay, do I have this unit correct? I didn't pick it up and flip it over and sew a wrong seam. Now, once the tack is in there and once you're happy with it, and by the way, ladies, uh, I do three tacks, you know, like the baseball thing, three strikes and you're out, three tacks, if I'm still not perfect on it, um, honestly, I'm the only one that's ever going to notice. The rest of the world will. But I, it makes me happy to get my points lining up. So once I've got my tack in there, I'm now going to come in and I'm going to go ahead and start sewing my seam. And you are literally going to sew right over top of the tack. The tack uh, is never coming out. It's always going to stay as part of the, the quilt. Um, the only really extra work there is there is to you need to trim up a little bit more threads, but it certainly is a lot less work than seam rippering the seam multiple times until you get it the way you would like. And so we're going to come at the end here, okay, and we're going to open it up, and we're looking to have our point lined up right along the edge there. And so I'm going to take it over to the ironing board now, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to press that to the side. So we'll press that. And now we're coming back. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to take our asymmetrical triangles. So remember that the asymmetrical triangles had a left and a right. Now I cut mine out uh, in solid fabric, so I really, it doesn't make any difference. I have a right side and another right side. But definitely if you have a print, because of the way the die cuts out, uh, it's gonna give you that effect. Now what we wanna do is when we're putting this unit together, we wanna take it, oh, excuse me. So this is what we're gonna be heading for right now, looking like this. So when we put this unit together, we want to have the big parts of the triangle. And how I remembered it is the fat part of the diamond, the fat part of the triangle, they go together. So we're going to do this one at a time. So we're going to put one side on and then we're going to flip it over and do the other side. So when we pop onto here, once again, the notches, the ends of the triangles have been cut off. They've been de-tipped. De so it makes it super easy to line up, even though this is a really kind of uh, long, skinny triangle. So we're heading down. We come to the end. I'll hop over and I'll press it. So there is our first unit on. Now, interestingly, the next unit's gonna go like this. So once again, the fat part of the triangle to the fat part of the diamond. But what I found, and what I think you'll find on your machine, is that when you are lining up here, and you wanna get started sewing, so the, the, the urge is to always have the triangle on the top, because then you can see it. But there's almost no fabric here to get it uh, under the feed dogs and get it started feeding. So you get started and it kind of struggles there for a little bit uh, and then it takes off. So rather than do that, because remember you're going to be doing four for each of these uh, uh, blocks and if you're doing four blocks you're doing 16 of them, let's make it easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply flip my piece over and line up starting on the fat end and going towards the skinny end and then you won't have you have plenty of fabric up here for the feed dog to grab a hold of and it makes it much easier to do remember quilting should be fun so if it's if we're finding something that we're struggling with we should find a different way to do it 
So off we go. And you'll see I can go all the way down to the bottom. And no issues, not having to help it along. The machine is just taking care of it all by itself. So we'll come in and we'll press that again. All right, so you should have four of those. Now the last piece to attach is going to be the, the symmetrical triangle, the C on the piece here. So let me flip this around so it looks the same. So we're gonna take our symmetrical triangle and once again, easy to remember, the fat end of the triangle is going to be to the fat end of the, the diamond, as opposed to going like that direction. So always the fat ends together. So once again, we're going to flip that over, and that is going to create the unit that we need to sew this block together. So once again, it's D-tipped, so just get those D-tipped uh, lines, ends lined up. And once again, we're going to do a little press. All right. So now we're looking at our block. Remember, our pink is going to be our corner. So we're going to line up the pink in one corner. Then we're going to come to the next one, and we're going to line up the pink in the corner as well. So that's going to be the corner of our blocks. Also, if you want to think of it as the larger of the asymmetric, excuse me, the symmetrical triangle uh, is going to be at that outside edge. So we're going to have four units that are just like this. We're going to start out and we're going to sew those two together. So think of it as a really large uh, four patch that has kind of wonky seams. And once again, because of those D-tipped, you're going to find they line up right along the edge there, and then you're just lining that seam up. Cut our thread, and then give it a press. So we are really cruising along here. And in the magic of video land, we have our second unit ready to go. So now, really the last seam that we have to do is this seam here. And here's the joy of it. The only part that we need to get lined up is this corner, this uh, center point here. You'll notice that none of the seams, there's no corresponding seam on the other side. So it's kind of a one in the center. We get that point done and then everything else is going to line up beautifully. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and do my quilt tack because once again, I'm picky about my points. And this one is kind of a little more uh, normal because when you've pressed the seam allowances opposite and created that wonky four patch, uh, the seam allowances are going to grip together. They're going to nestle together. And we'll go ahead and we'll just do a few stitches through. Get our quilt tack in. And we'll open that up. And we'll check that out. And so that quilt tack is okay. Um, I could live with that. But I also think that I could pull it in just a little bit more. Uh, this one is lining up perfectly. This one is a little bit out. So I could take the tack out and put a second one in, or when I go to sew it, I can just sew a little bit to the inside of that tack, and that should just tweak that point up perfectly. So we'll line this over. We're lining up our end, so there's the end of our uh, D-tipped corner, and we're gonna go ahead and sew down, and we're gonna sew the, the other length, the other side.
All right, so I'm coming to my quilt tack, and I wanted to just cinch it just a tiny little bit. So literally, I am just stitching a needle's breadth to the left of that quilt tack, kind of shoving it into my quarter inch seam allowance a little bit there, my, my guide, and then I'm just gonna let it go back in. Remember that no one is ever going to x-ray your quilt and double check your quarter inch seam allowances, okay? Um, so long as it looks pretty from the outside, that works. And so boom, we've got our piece and we're looking beautiful. And that just cinching that up made me happy there. Now, the one issue that we may have in the future that has nothing to do with the piecing, but is to do with finishing the project, is this section, because so many blocks are coming in together, is giving us quite a bump. So when I come over and I press, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna press that seam open, which is not something we do a lot in uh, quilting, but I'm gonna press that seam open so that I'm minimizing the bulk so that when I come back and I do some machine quilting later on, my machine isn't gonna go clunk, clunk, clunk through that heavy bulk. So let's get that seam pressed and we'll show you how these blocks are gonna lay out. And isn't she pretty? Looks so nice. Our next block will go right next door. And you can see by doing those asymmetrical um, triangles in a different color than the background, it creates a secondary pattern. And here's our other two blocks. And when we put those together with that, we're gonna create this really, really cute little wall hanging. So all I have to do to finish this up is sew basically a big four patch, right? So I'm gonna sew these two together, which I've already done. I'm gonna sew these two together. And the only two points I'm gonna be at all concerned about are gonna be there. So you may wanna throw a quilt tack in on those two corners. And then once those are together, they're gonna to line up here. I'm gonna quilt tack on those two and the center just because I'm fussy. And then I think probably throw a couple of borders around and I think we have a, a completed uh, top. So thank you for joining me here today. I'm so happy to get back to, to teaching. I've missed it so much. I miss you guys seeing you guys in, in person. Um, next week, uh, you might wanna join me. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to create a, a binding from your backing of your quilt so that you can create a binding any size you would like. Anything from a half an inch to, you know, whatever you'd like, three inches so. And I'll show you some tricks on how to get a really perfect mitered corner with no math. So join me back next week. We're looking forward to it. Bye.